This is uh, Todd and I'm back and uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to show you guys how to actually write a little bit more complex Python script for doing a basic HTTP server. Now one thing I want to emphasize is my goal here is not to actually teach you how to program in Python but my goal is uh, to give an understanding a little bit of more how programming and development works. Um, understand the back end. Now these tutorials would be good for someone who knows like uh, basic Python but wants to learn how to start working with uh, libraries because we're going to need a couple libraries for this. Um, I plan on making this into two sections. Uh, one is creating a, a very basic web server like we have but adding a little bit more features to it and a little bit more options and whatnot. And the second part is going to be about uh, designing it more towards server use per se. Alright, so let's get started. Once again, I'm using uh, Python 2.7 and my favorite little tool here, here is uh, idle. I'll be honest, I don't particularly care for the shell. This is what I want. It's a little window for me to create a script in. Alright, so Everything is looked at as a file. HTTP, HTTP server allows external access to files externally, uh, not exact, you know, not from your computer. Multiple computers can access it. Uh, we have a server and a client. This can be dealing with the server side. A client, for this, the client, all they need is an internet connection and a web browser. And to know the IP address, unless you forward the ports on your router and direct a domain name to your IP address on the proper port. So, here we go. First thing we're going to need to do is import simple HTTP server import socket server import base HTTP well, I don't think I misspoke that. Space HTTP server. Alright. Oh, and we're also going to need uh, import OS. Uh, these libraries, what they are, is they're basically uh, Python programs with functions built in. If you don't program simply, what it means is this gives you more options to play with. It makes tasks easier to do. So instead of literally having to go through, you know, you can take, if you try not to use libraries, libraries um, to create a server would probably take a couple thousand lines. By using these pre-built libraries that Python and people make, it condenses the code because there's no point in, it's basically like reinventing the wheel. These libraries are created for you to use so that way you don't actually have to go through and manually program everything. So you don't want to reinvent the wheels, use the libraries if you can't because they make things way easier and way quicker. All right, so after we import everything, we're going to start by supplying our host name. You don't really have to do this step. This program will work without it. It's just uh, if you're a server administrator, administrator you probably, uh, if you if you like run a small hosting company and or you want to get into it and you played around with the patch and looked at the configuration files as a place for the host name but I'm not going to go into that um, port as I uh, said before a port is think of it as like a port like a ship you have a port on the coast a ship comes up parks at a dock and it, it, you know, supplies come off, supplies go on, and then it moves on. This is kind of like the same concept. The port is where traffic's going to travel in and out. So our port for this is going to be 8,000. If you're wondering why I'm using 8,000 instead of 80, which is usually the HTTP port, uh, this might be because it's on Mac and I'm not running it as sudo, but 80 gives me a permission denied, so I'm running on 8,000. So we're going to run on port 80. Let me set our handler. That's going to use the 
simple HTTP server. Make sure I spelled that right. Yep. Simple HTTP request handler. All right, basically it means the variable. Oh yeah, should probably also talk about that. A variable, if you see where host name equals local, that should be local host. Port equals 8,000, these are variables, they represent values. This makes it easy because uh, instead of actually putting 8,000, you can change these around fairly easily, especially whenever uh, I get into the next part of the video, or the next video. So we have our handler set up. Now, this is where we're gonna use the, the OS library. I'll talk about this in one second. Hopefully I got this right. Desktop slash server. Alright. If you've ever used, you know, a regular terminal or command prompt in Windows, you do C D, it changes the directory. This is the same thing for the programming language. Um, the problem with uh, the simple server that I'm not really gonna go into is the fact that you have to be you have to run it out of the out of the directory that you want it to be a server. So whatever the server is, that's what you have to run the program out of per se. So you have to change the directory. So we're going to change it to users Todd Martin desktop server. So whenever I run it, I don't have to be in that directory per se. Python's going to run it in the directory for me without me actually being in it. I hope that makes sense. But hopefully you'll see what I'm getting to. All right. So we've changed our direct directory. Um, yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Okay, I think I have to start that over now. I forgot you wanted to do your own logic, so I'll just do it. Okay, let me just leave it right there. Hang it up, because that doesn't belong okay. on the floor. That was my mom. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Trying to think where it was. Mind blank. Okay, here we go. HTTPD equals simple HTTP server dot simple HTTP. Oh, wrong one. This is going to be socket server, which is where this library is going to come into play. Socket server dot TCP server host name port handler. All right. What it's simply going to do is uh, HTTPD is going to call up inside of the socket server library the TCP server function. Um, we're going to be working with TCP. Um, you can look, you can Google search and find out what TCP means. Uh, you, you got two main types. You have TCP and UDP. So next we have print. Now we're just going to run this just for looks. And what this is simply going to say is it's going to output servers running on our port. And by putting a comma space in our port variable, it's going to list the port, which will be 8,000. This next line is really, really important. And what that means is um, it's basically going to call it this variable and tell it to run this forever until you stop it. All right. So here we go. Change our directory to desktop. Change it to I have my file. That would ex hold on a second. I need to save this in my proper area. 
development blog webserve.py which whenever you're creating Python scripts they put .py or I think it's .py w and .py w is more for Windows we'll save it change directory to yeah I'm lazy alright python webserve.py uh oh There we go. Should run. All right. Now we're running on port 8000. And it is running based out of this folder. So whenever we pull up trusty old Firefox here, localhost, go to port 8000. Here we go. So it's running out of there. Now, if you notice, this does the same exact thing that our um, other thing did whenever we ran the one line piece of code it does the same exact thing nothing's really changed it's just uh, actually went through and wrote it instead of going the easy way out um, now you'll see how uh, whenever you're writing programs you have to define you have to define variables for the program to use such as uh, in our socket dot tcp server we are running um, it needs to take arguments. These arguments we have are hostname, port, and handler. Hostname, localhost. Our port is going to define what port um, it needs to accept communications in and out of. And uh, our handler is just as it says simple HTTP server, simple HTTP request handler. So it handles the request that the server gets. Um, once again, the os.chdir, that's simply to change the directory so that way it will run out of user's Todd Martin desktop server. You can make that whatever directory you wish. Also, another quick note, this is a cross-platform. It's cross-platform, so if you're running this in Windows, everything's going to remain the same except your directory path here. Instead, it'll be, what is it, like C... Uh, they use those, let's say, programs. So that's all that really changes. So this will run on Linux, Mac. If, as long as you have Python, this thing will run. So that's it for this. In the next video, we're going to go into making this a little bit easier for the user of the actual program to use. Make this easier for them. That's it.